So there are two subjects that if you talk about in any community or in front of anybody, then, then they'll love it, they'll eat it up. Marriage and jinn. So I remember, subhanAllah, there was once a shaykh, and I believe it was Shaykh Walid, who said that, uh, you know, instead of just talking about marriage separately and jinn separately, you might as well give a lecture about being married to a jinn and then you'll pack the house, right? Because those are two subjects that everyone wants to hear about. And it's very interesting because, subhanAllah, that's actually a subject that you find in the books of interaction, the fiqh of dealing with jinn and so on and so forth, is the, the sayings of the ulama on, on, on marriage to jinn. And, you know, you talk about a lack of compatibility, right? When you talk about being of a different species. So obviously it's something that's hated. But there are actually people that would try to go out and some of them would even succeed in marrying a jinn, that they become so acquainted with that realm that that actually happens. And I actually once met a brother, um, you know, and, and I'm, not try, I'm, I'm not saying that, that, you know, he was truthful in everything that he was saying here, but he was like, you know, I tried, be, I, I was married to a human being three times and it didn't work out well. <laughs> so I figured, let me go marry a jinn and that would work a little bit better. They give you a lot less trouble. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're probably just talking to yourself, but Okay, you know, no, no feed, there's nothing coming back to you uh, from a jinn. So th the point being here again is that it's, it's there, these types of discussions are there. But what's the first, the absolute first thing that we talk about when we talk about anybody else, whether it's another creation, another species or a people, the first thing as believers that we are to be concerned with is their right upon us. So when we talk about the jinn, the very first thing we should talk about after establishing who they are is what are their rights upon us? Just like the animals have rights upon us, the jinn have right upon us, the angels as we said, we shouldn't offend them, they have rights upon us. The jinn as well have rights upon us. And this is something that's well established in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ even gave us uh, you know, orders and commands along those lines. So Rasulullah ﷺ was uh, approached by some jinn from around the Tigris River, min jinn al-Jazeera, some that came from the Tigris River. And they complained to the Prophet ﷺ about something. And the Prophet ﷺ, on the basis of that, he gave certain commands and certain prohibitions. So on one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ, he prohibited the Arabs from, uh, and anyone in that case in the desert, from urinating in random holes. Because Rasulullah ﷺ said, those are actually habitats of the jinn, uh, those random holes. Um, Ibn Umar anhu said that once the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was delivering a sermon, he was delivering a khutbah, and he was mentioning certain snakes uh, to be killed. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if you see Dhul uh, Tufyatayn, Dhul Tufyatayn means the snake that has two lines on the back. It's a particular poisonous uh, snake that the Arabs were uh, familiar with. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if you see Dhul Tufyatayn, if you see that snake, then you should kill it. And he said, if you see Al Abtar, Al Abtar are snakes that, are, that, that have a mutilated or short tail. Again, something that the Arabs recognize as poisonous snakes. He said that you should kill those. But then later on, Ibn Umar anhu said that you shouldn't kill Al-Awamir right away or Dhawat al-Buyut. Al-Awamir or Dhawat al-Buyut are the house snakes. They were used to seeing a particular type of house snake um, in their time that, that didn't pose any harm and it was a very awkward snake. And the Prophet Wasallam said you should actually warn that snake uh, and ask it to leave. And the Arabs, subhanAllah, the, the Muslims would actually do this and it would work, okay? Because the Prophet ﷺ said that those awamir, those dawat al-buyut, they actually tend to be jinn. So if they're not one of those harmful and poisonous snakes, and realize if you're living in the desert, um, you encounter these types of animals all the time. You encounter snakes and scorpions and so on all the time. So it's very easy to catch it at first sight. Rasulullah ﷺ said, when you see those snakes that don't cause harm, instead of killing it, ask it to leave. Right, and give it a chance to leave because it could be one of the jinn uh, and they would have uh, you know, that right upon you. Uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he also said that the Prophet um, you know, talked about al-qareen. He talked about uh, what the qareen has upon us and, and, and the qareen is what Allah mentions in the Qur'an, uh, the jinn that is always around us. There's a jinn that particularly constantly whispers to us the same way that there's an angel that's constantly telling us to do good there, and that's also called the Qareen in Surah Qaf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this jinn, which is always an evil jinn, the Qareen is always an evil jinn, that tries to urge you to do evil. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَقَدْ وُكِّلَ بِهِ قَرِينُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ uh, There is not a single one of you except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has caused that there is a Qareen from the jinn that is stuck to you and they said, even you, O Prophet of Allah, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
He said, even me, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'anani alayhi fa aslam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported me against him. And so he became Muslim. فَلَا يَأْمُرُنِ إِلَّا بِالْخَيْرِ So this jinn does not command me or he doesn't advise me except with that which is good. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu jinn actually accepted Islam and that was something from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he also mentioned to us, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, our food that we eat, he gave, you know, the jinn particular things that they could eat and the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to be considerate uh, of the bones that we throw and so on and so forth because that's something that belongs to them. Now, as far as our interaction with them uh, is concerned, um, you know, one thing we should not do is we shouldn't go to fortune tellers and, and people that, that seem to be able to know something of the future because are they in communication with the jinn? Some of them are, but the Prophet ﷺ said what they do is they communicate with the jinn and those jinn, you know, they're able to hear only a few things from the skies. They're able to hear something from, the, from what's being said in the skies and so on and so forth. Because after the Qur'an was revealed, the jinn were forbidden from exiting a sama dunya. They're forbidden from exiting this heaven. So they hear very little information. And the Prophet said they will hear one thing, وَيَزِيدُ فِيهَا مِئَةَ كَذْبَةً But then they'll, they'll add a hundred lies to it and they'll give it to you then. So the soothsayer or the, the one who deals with the jinn is not going to tell you the truth. So the Prophet told us, he taught us, not to go to those that interact with the jinn to try to figure anything out of the future. The Prophet ﷺ, he also taught us a way of protecting ourselves from being seen uh, by the jinn when we enter into the restroom. So the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khaba'ith. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you uh, from, uh, from al khubthi wal khaba'ith, the male and the female jinn from seeing me at this point. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guards the believer as they enter into the restroom. And then obviously as you come out, you would say, ghufranaka, you would seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's a matter, it's a sensitive issue here of making sure that you uh, don't do anything to bring their harm upon you. You don't do anything um, you know, uh, to offend them. And at the same time, uh, you protect yourself uh, from their harm and from being seen by them in times when you shouldn't be seen by them and so on and so forth. My beloved brothers and sisters, one of the most effective ways to protect yourself from the harm of jinn is by reciting Ayatul Kursi. This verse is known for its immense blessings and protection against all forms of evil. The Prophet Muhammad taught us that whoever recites it before sleeping will be guarded by Allah and no harm will come to them throughout the night. Make it a habit to recite Ayatul Kursi after every obligatory prayer and before bedtime to ensure spiritual protection. Jinn often dwell in places that humans may overlook such as forests, deserts, abundant areas and even small holes in the ground. It's important to avoid urinating in random holes as this could be homes for jinn. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, warned us about offending or harming them unintentionally as this might provoke their retaliation. Always seek Allah's protection by saying Bismillah before entering such areas or performing personal activities outdoors. In addition to reciting Ayatul Kursi, Remember to maintain cleanliness, perform regular prayers and recite the recommended morning and evening supplications. Avoid actions that could upset jinn such as wandering alone in dark, isolated places without prayer or disturbing their habitats. Keeping a balanced spiritual and physical awareness will ensure that you remain under Allah's protection and avoid unnecessary conflicts with the unseen world.